Vote 2024. Donald Trump made it clear in Iowa last night that it is his party by winning the Republican Party caucuses by an unprecedented margin. While it may be a three-person race, Trump is well ahead of the rest. And despite what polls indicated ahead of the vote, Ron DeSantis came in second, albeit a distant second, edging out Nikki Haley. And Vivek Ramaswamy's disappointing tally had him bowing out of the race. Joining me on the morning show, News for Jack's political analyst and head of the Jacksonville University Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Good to Grace. Have you here. So a couple of interesting things here to talk about. More than half of Iowa's GOP lawmakers backed DeSantis, as did their leading influential conservative activists. It shows their waning influence, don't you think? Well, Bruce, in the end, yes, but this really wasn't about endorsements. It wasn't about the waning influence. I think last night's result was the popularity of Donald Trump in Iowa. He did well, of course, with evangelicals, a lesson he learned from 2016, by the way, when Ted Cruz won Iowa. He did well with those social conservatives. He, of course, did well in the rural areas. He even edged out Nikki Haley among college-educated voters in Iowa. This was a 30-point win, a historic margin, very dominant win. I will say, however, there were only 110 10,000 votes. That's less than we have in Duval County in many races. 186,000 in 2016. The weather was a big factor. The caucus system is a big factor. But in the big picture, dominant win for Donald Trump. DeSantis stays in the race. He beat Haley. There was some speculation before, and if you looked at the polls, there were some people that said, you know, he doesn't get past Iowa. Are you surprised at all? I'm not surprised he came in second. The Des Moines, Iowa poll did show that Nikki Haley was surging in terms of the polling and that had her in second, but this really did set up for Governor DeSantis. He had visited all 99 counties. He had invested heavily uh, in Iowa. He had a ground game in Iowa. He had the endorsement of the governor. The caucus worked to his advantage over Nikki Haley because of his ground game. The weather worked to his advantage because of the enthusiasm of his voters. He really needed to outperform and a 30-point loss to Donald Trump really wasn't outperforming, and a two-point margin over Nikki Haley wasn't what he hoped for. So for Governor DeSantis, by coming in second, he can move forward, but a disappointing evening for him overall, tough path forward for the governor. All right, that said, we move forward now to New Hampshire, a much more moderate and less staunchly partisan base there. It's a must-win, that said, for Nikki Haley, even though it is a voter base that is more, well, favorable for her. It is more favorable, and it's critical for her. Last night was a little disappointing for her, too. She had hoped to come in second so she could send a big message as she goes to New Hampshire. But one week from now, when you go to New Hampshire, it is one of the most important contests of this entire election season. She has a realistic opportunity to win New Hampshire. Even before Chris Christie got out of the race, she was down by maybe seven points in the, in the view of many in some polling. And then Chris Christie's votes likely will come to her. Don't confuse the Iowa vote with the New Hampshire vote. New Hampshire, very, very different. New Hampshire, of course, independent voters. New Hampshire, more college educated, more moderate, more centrist. This is a place where she can compete. Critically important for Nikki Haley to win. If she does, it's more than 30 days to South Carolina, which is her home state. And if she can win and pull that off, maybe a little bit more competitive race. I started off by saying it was clear that this is Donald Trump's party, the Republican Party. Few signs of any weakness for Donald Trump. Um, if anywhere, can DeSantis and Haley pick up anything? Bruce, I think Governor DeSantis and Governor Haley have to squint really hard to see a path forward. Everyone's trying to make this into a competitive race, but at the moment it's really not a competitive race. The one thing that could change this would not be a particular state, but maybe a courtroom or a development outside of a particular state. Certainly polling suggests that a conviction of Donald Trump could affect the vote. But if you look at the legal calendar, his trial is scheduled, and by the way, we don't know if that's going forward because of the appeal, the one with Jack Smith in Washington, is set to begin on March 4th, the day before Super Tuesday. If there was a conviction, and that's highly speculative, it probably wouldn't be till summer. Could be well after he's wrapped up the nomination. So for now, the path forward very strong for Donald Trump, for Nikki Haley and for Governor DeSantis. This was the best case scenario for Donald Trump, a commanding win and the two of them staying in to fracture the non-Trump vote. Again, advantage Donald Trump. Well, yeah, but you say the legal road ahead for him can be bumpy. You've got the Supreme Court taking up the issue of insurrection on February 8th. You've got the criminal trials that are ahead. Yet if you looked at the polls out of Iowa, most of the people said, I don't care if he's convicted or not, we're going to go ahead and vote for him. Bruce, there's a bumpy road ahead, but I think some of those bumps relate more to the general election than they do to the primary. Um, on the February 8th 
oral arguments on staying on the ballot, I expect Donald Trump will be on the ballot. When it comes to some of the other legal contests, the legal calendar is really in, in flux. I don't expect the trials to go forward at the dates that which they're set. There's appeals that are pending. And if there is a trial, and if he's convicted, certainly a big impact for November. A little bit of a warning sign coming out of Iowa last night for the president. For those independent voters, for those more moderate voters, they are leaning, they could lean in some other directions. It'll be, if he is the nominee, and it appears he's going to be, it'll be a much more competitive, challenging race for him in November than it is in the primary. It was also interesting for the president, the biggest issue was immigration and not the economy, which you and I can talk about next week when we get together on our podcast. All right, we'll be back with more after the break. Thanks, Rick.